In the previous video, we have set up the entire scene for stylization, we set up the initial lighting, and we introduced a bulk attribute tool that allows us to modify many materials in bulk. Now it's time for the real part. We're gonna stylize the scene. So I'm gonna bring this reference here, and I'm gonna set it on top of my other windows. And yes, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on the materials of our three characters which are the ones that uh, are mostly seen. As you can see, the background is pretty much fades towards uh, this yellowish color. We have one light to start with. This is gonna give us a good idea of how the lighting and the material is gonna react to light. Let's set this up. We're talking last tutorial that color shading will play a big role in this scene, simply because the shading of the characters here, as you can see, doesn't really go towards black. It goes towards this uh, brownish reddish. So that's exactly what we need to achieve here. So the first thing we're gonna do is to enable color shading and then set up a shade color. So in this case, we're gonna set up a sort of reddish shade color and as you can see the color is being applied to them. Now I've noticed that in my selection the shirt is not there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select again all of the objects that I want to modify, the materials applied to those objects, and I'm gonna hit refresh here. There we go, now we have the shade color. By the way, this gets updated with the last material you selected, in this case it was the shirt, so that's why the shade color now is blue instead of the reddish that we had previously. Let's set this up here we remove auto refresh that means that when we click somewhere else the selection gets saved and we can continue uh, modifying the attributes here so let's put something along these lines then something that's very useful is this uh, shade wrap this allows you to give a stronger hint of the color whatever you want it to be let's make this a bit darker so this is gonna be sped up I'm just gonna click on the attributes until I get uh, a result that I like so enjoy Okay, now that I have set up the main characters, I'm gonna control the configuration to make it look somehow like this. First thing I'm gonna do is to set up the atmosphere tint to whatever color is in the background. Let's make this rather a bit more orangish like this. And then I'm gonna set the substrate color to be like this bright yellow. Let me customize things a little bit here. I'm gonna make it come closer, basically start sooner this transition and end also sooner as well. I've noticed that the here the hair of thought is not correct, so let's remove the rim light here. I want to have a different color. Now as you can see because they're sharing the same uh, material, whenever I remove the rim light opposite that I want on Toti, the nostril are also removed. So ideally we would need to separate these two materials and that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. To separate them you just need to select it, go to material presets and then I'm first gonna create a new preset. So this is gonna be Toti because we're basing it on the material that is applied to Toti and I'm gonna save it. Once it's saved we have Toti here so we can grab this and select the nostrils, all of them. So if we go to here we're gonna just hit F on the outliner to show all the nostrils there we go and probably these ones yes and this is the eyes so we don't need to select the eyes whiskers sorry not nostrils whiskers so we select all of them and then we apply the same material but with uh, create new material here checked once we load this up the nostrils are gonna have a new material independent one and we can grab them individually and simply 
remove the rim light opposite from the nostrils but keep it on dotty so now that we have that let's increase a little bit these there's some kind of subsurface scattering here that makes this very reddish to address the subsurface scattering we first need to see what this one light is influencing how it is influencing our scene so for that we're gonna switch to the perspective camera once we have the perspective camera loaded, we can come here and see that all the changes that we were doing to the materials were pretty much done on the lit part of objects. So everything that was on the shade, I mean, that there's just so much control that you can have with one light. So in order to have this kind of lighting, we're going to have to light one side of the character and the other side of the character. And then we're also going to join their influences to make this character pop out a bit more as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the key light and I'm going to duplicate it, control D, and then I'm going to rotate it to the other side towards Tomo so that we have it somehow like this. This is also going to rotate a bit more. And I'm also going to point this a bit further down because we want to have this bright highlight on Toti here. And we're only going to have that if our light is actually coming from the top. So let's move this a bit down. We can also see what the key light is seen right now we can make this a bit smaller with the angle there we go so one is gonna light up this character and toti and the other key light that we have here is going to light up these two characters instead all right so let's see how that looks like from our shot cam little mouse drag and there we have uh, one light for each and we already automatically have a much better highlight on Toti as well. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to tear off this panel. So I'm going to go here to tear off so that we can have this on a separate window. So we can always see what our shot is going to look like. Let me make this smaller like this. And because we're not really going to use these tools here at the moment, I'm just going to leave this up here and I'm going to check the perspective in case you want to view what the perspective is seeing with MNPRX as well. First, we don't need any of this I mean, occlusion here and we just switch to MNPRX and enable lighting here. This brings us now two different uh, views. One of them is the camera view and the other one is the perspective view. Or actually, I'm going to change. I'm going to make this a perspective and this one my view, simply because the perspective is for us to see what the shading is actually doing. As you can see here, we have a, a very orange color, but from the shot camera, we don't have that. I'm going to make this change now. I often do this so that I can actually see more of what the shading is changing. So because we haven't done any auto refresh, this tool should still be locked to the materials. So let me first disable NURBS curves and then try out something. Yes, so it's still controlling all the materials. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce light. This is what's making them look orange and I don't want that right now. Then the second thing I'm going to do, we have our lights here, is I'm going to first of all bring this up a little bit again to match with the other one. There we go. Maybe turn it around even more like this and like that. Okay, and now we have a much better control over the shading because more of the characters is in the lit part of lights, as we can see here. This light is shining him from this part of the front and this light is shining on this character and we have simply much more shading information. If you were to see what the shading information looks like, we can change here to the AUV target and here in the green channel, you can see what our shading information is giving us. So this is the lit part, is the green here. And if we change this to negative, we have the unlit part of the objects. So this is an easy way to see what kind of data we have for shading. Because if we only have one light, then it's kind of difficult to control and to push the materials towards the result that you want. So I'm going to continue here modifying these materials. But first of all, I'm going to also modify the atmosphere tint. Uh, this needs to come much sooner, especially if I see the color key is pretty much until here. So let's make this 
30. Yeah, something like this and probably from 2 instead. From 2 to 30 it's gonna be of this color and then the paper color is gonna stay like this for now. Maybe push it a bit towards reddish. There we go. I'm gonna continue now with the materials. Something I'm also gonna enable is the highlight here just to test it out. So what this does, it allows you to give a highlight to the materials. So I'm going to just select all the materials again. I'm going to refresh this and we're going to find here the highlight roll off and highlight transparency. So what this does is that whenever I enable the roll off, you're going to see that there's a highlight coming on on the characters. And this highlight is based also on the light color. And it's a very sharp highlight. So for some scenes, it might be very useful. You can also control here the transparency, how much this highlight should look like. So he, with this, you can kind of achieve some sort of cell shading, which we don't necessarily want, but I'm just experimenting for this shot. Since it's a very dreamy shot, it's kind of tricky to achieve this lighting from the viewport alone, but we're on it. So I'm gonna disable the highlight for the time being. I might enable it per material at some point. Refresh this. All right, so now that we have a base shading for all of these materials, I'm gonna treat each one independently because after all, skin needs to have a different treatment than textiles. Let's work on that. I'm gonna select this and I'm still gonna use the bulk attribute simply because I find it a bit nicer to work with in general. I'm gonna enable auto refresh and just by selecting the materials, I get also these results here. Okay, so for the skin, since we have some sort of subsurface scattering, we need to have more control over the colored shading. By this, I'm gonna add some shade wrap. Right, I'm gonna do something similar to the other character. Before I address the textiles, I wanna add this uh, rim light on the skin as well. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna add a highlight in this case. Just click on the material to select the material and actually see what the result looks like. Then I'm gonna increase the roll off, decrease the transparency. I'm gonna set the light color to the one from our color key. Also control the rim light. Actually, I'm only gonna work with rim light and not with um, highlight in this case. like this. Now the textile. Now we're going to go on the other character and make the changes accordingly as well. All right, let's move the light that points to this guy a little bit. So we're Gonna move it a bit further so that we have a bit more shading information in the front, like here. And a bit from the top. There we go. Change to the shot camera again and removing the lights here. Show and deselect selection highlighting. Ah, okay, so the shirt is connected to the pants here, so I need to thread carefully there.
All right, and now I'm going to work on Doty here. So in the case of Doty, I'm also going to change the reflectance model a bit. So I'm going to choose Angular Lambert. This is going to push the shading more towards the back as well. So it's going to help me a little bit with the shading, achieve this smoother transition here. And I'm also gonna try to put a highlight, but since we're using the light color as well, it might look a bit off, but let's see. No, I'm not gonna use highlight. It makes it look too cell shaded. Okay, so for now we're going to leave the scene like that. In the next tutorial we're going to add proxies to achieve this more dreamy effect and then we can polish further on the materials in the scene. That's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe to be notified about future videos and see you in the next one.